And here's another type of button that we can create in Photoshop for our sales pages or websites. Uh, this is a, is a very clean type of design and you can see how the text is uh, indented into the button. You can see that. I'm going to show you how to do all this on this tutorial. I'll go ahead and move this down. I'll come up here to File and New. And what I'm going to do here is create an image, and this is what I highly recommend, is creating an image larger than, this, than the actual size the button will be. You know, by doing that it's just going to give you a lot more space, you'll have a lot more white uh, background around the button, and it just gives you a better idea on what the button will look like on, on like a white background web page. Uh, but I like to do that. I'll go ahead and enter in 300 for the width, and about 200 for the height. I don't think we're ever going to need anything bigger than that. So, uh, But here we go. And what I'll do here is let's just go ahead and start creating the button. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is over on the layers palette is make a new layer just like that. And then over on the toolbar, we will need the rounded rectangle tool right here. And this will help us create the shape of the button, just like you see in this graphic right here. And so next step, what we'll do is need to select or need to set the foreground color for the color that the background of the button will be. And in this case, I'll just go over to the yellow since this is the color that we've chosen here. Or I think I'll just make this a little more orange because I think the color of this button here is actually more of an orange. Yeah, it's right about if you uh, if you want to copy the same color that I have here, just right here where it says this is the hex value input. It's FFCC00 and you can enter this into your color picker and get the exact same color that I have here. So when you have the color, go ahead and click OK. And then before we draw, what I want you to do is come up here to the radius option on the options bar for the shape tool here and the radius here this is where you would set how much roundness you want on the corners of your button so it's currently set at 8 and you can see 8 pixels gives us this result that we have here however though if you wanted something a little more rounded you can increase that to about 15 and then here's the result you can see it's much more rounded now for this tutorial I like 8 because it's not too curvy it has a very nice balanced design there. There we go. I like that. That looks pretty good. Next, what I'll do, since we have this shape on its own layer, I'll hold down the command key, which is the control key on the PC, and I'll hold that down. I'll get the little selection next to the hand on the layers palette, and I'll click on that, and it'll select it. Then what I'll do is down here and create a new layer while that selection's still active there. And then what I'll do is up here on select, I'll go down to modify and contract and I'll contract this selection by two pixels because what we're going to do is create a highlight inside this selection or inside this button shape here and I'll show you how to do that over here on the toolbar click on the foreground color and then right up here what I want you to do is select a very bright yellow it must be a bright yellow uh, it, you know white it might look okay but it's I just it's you know highlights and shadows in the real world are really colored they're not light or black or, or white or black yeah they're right they're actually just just when you're always making a highlight just make it a br much more brighter color than the actual background color you have and in other words if it was blue just make a light blue color and I'm talking like about this light right here you can see um, if I, if I have the only web safe colors on, it'll give me a lot less colors to choose from. And that'll make me, it'll make it a little bit easier to select the colors. Now you see the difference? This is the color of the background or the button that we have now. And this is the, the bright yellow color. Okay. That's what I mean. That's just the difference. That's how we want that to look. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Then what I'll do over on the toolbar is select the gradient tool. And then I'll position the gradient tool crosshair right here or just a little bit a little bit above the selection on the very top. And I'll hold down the shift key and drag all the way to the bottom of the selection right there and release the mouse. There we go. I'll come up here to select and deselect. There we go. Looking pretty good. All right. Well, the next thing we can do is add a little drop shadow for the bottom of the button. We can see we have the drop shadow on this image here. And so what I'll do is over here on the layers palette, I'll activate layer number one, which contains the, the background button shape there. I'll come right up here to layer, layer style, and I'll try that again, <laughs> a layer, layer style, and I'll select drop shadow. There we go. And I don't want the drop shadow, too much of a drop shadow. I just want a very, very slight drop shadow. So what I'm going to do here, right where it says where the distance is, I'm just going to decrease that a little bit. And the size is really where, you know, how fuzzy and how 
uh, you know, how, how large you want that, that shadow to be. I don't think we want it that much. So I'm going to take that all the way down. And if I could just probably get away with maybe like one or two, I'll just go ahead and leave it at one. And you see where the angle is here? I'm going to go ahead and just move that all the way to 90 degrees. Or what you can do is just type in 90 degrees in this little value input here. And that'll take it straight up. And you can see that bat and the shadow's coming. It's just right underneath the bottom. And I think I'll just go ahead and decrease the distance. Take it down to number, just take it down from three to two. There we go. It's a very, very light drop shadow. Very nice. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then what we'll do next is add some text to the button. And this is where I'm going to show you how to add that indented looking text. It's really cool. So I'll come over to the toolbar and select the type tool. Then I'll click on the button. And then we'll just add some text to the button. And for this one, I'll just do exactly what I did on the completed design there. I'll just put uh, subscribe now. Subscribe now, order now, whatever you want to do. And I'll press the Enter key on the keyboard. There we go. And I'll click the uh, Move tool and center this text, or maybe just a little bit higher than center, because I want to add some other text on the bottom here. So I'll probably leave it right there. And you can see, because we have the highlight color still set to yellow, that the text is yellow. Well, don't worry. That's actually a good thing, because we're going to use that yellow as a highlight to make our text look indented into the button. I'll show you how to do that. Let's go over here to the Layers palette, and I want you to duplicate this type layer. Drag it to the new layer icon, the bottom of the Layers palette. We have a copy of it now, and I'm going to go ahead and double-click on it. Come over here to the options bar, click on the little color square here, and the color picker will come up. And then you can select the color that you want of the text. I'll just sample the same color that I have here. This is the color that I used, which is 0099FF. And you can use this, just type in this number here to get the exact same color that I'm using in this tutorial. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then what I'll do is press the Enter key on the keyboard. All right, so in order to get that indented look, all we have to do is offset this layer, this top colored layer, with, this, with the subscribe now. Offset it from the other subscribe now layer, which is down here. Easy way to do this. When you have the move tool, just come over to the keyboard and press the up arrow on the keyboard, and then press the left arrow on the keyboard. And there you go. You've got it. And if you want to look at it a little, little bit closer, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and Make sure that's centered a little better there. There we go. If you would like to see a little bit closer in what we did here, you can look. I'll zoom in and you can see the indention. And this is just an illusion. It's really not indented into the button, but it that's the kind of look it gives off. And that's what we really want. It really looks nice. It really looks very clean. And so what we'll do here next is I'll zoom in again. And I'm going to go over here on the toolbar. Select the horizontal type tool. And before I start typing with the horizontal type tool, I think I want to take this letter, this point size down a little bit. And, whoops, let me go ahead and click on the button first. There we go. I'll take the letter sizing down about 18. I'll change the color of the text to black. And then I'll just put some text down here. Immediate access. There we go. Immediate access. Get access now, whatever. It's just, you know, making stuff up here. I'll double click on that and then what I'll do is change it from Arial Narrow from just regular Arial. And then I'll take off the bold because sometimes when you have small text that's very bold, it can be hard to read. So we're going to use regular text with the Arial font here and I'm just going to size that down a little bit. There we go. I'll go ahead and select the Move tool, move this over here a little bit and it looks like the letters are a little bunched together. Well. Easy enough, I'll just come over here to the character palette. And right here, where the tracking is, I'll just go ahead and set that to zero. And then I'll move that character palette back up to the palette well. Press the Enter key on the keyboard. I'll duplicate that immediate access layer by dragging it to the new layer button right here. And the very top, or the very the bottom one here, we have the top copy and we have the bottom one here. What I'll do is double click on this bottom one and change it to that yellow. It's the same yellow, or a bright yellow, just like that. And then I'll click OK, and then I'll select the Move tool. Now we can't see that yellow. Well, that's because we need to offset it first. So what we can do is, on either layer, but I'm going to come up to the very top layer here, 
and hit the top arrow on the keyboard and then hit the left arrow and there we go now we've offset it and you can even turn down the opacity if you find that it's too black you can just turn it down a little bit just make it blend in a little bit better but there you go that's how we can create the button and you've seen it right here folks all right we'll see you later